Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. Now on today's show, we're gonna dive deep into arguably the world's best fishing lure, and that's the jig. Now this is a universal bait that pretty much catches every single freshwater game fish, you name the species, and it will catch them. And a lot of people consider jigs as basically a bottom bouncing bait, but the truth is many anglers today use jigs to swim different presentations through the middle of the water column. And there's a lot of subtleties when it comes to jig fishing. We're talking about drop speed, the head design, color, different patterns and shapes to the hook and eyelets, as well as the additional plastic trailers that you're gonna place on them. And recently, hair jigs have had a big resurgence in the fishing world. And today's show, we're joined by Al Linder, my father, who I know is a big time jig fisherman. <laughs> right on, Troy. It's my favorite way to catch fish. Uh, uh, uh. People might find this strange, but I'm gonna talk about walleyes first. I don't use live bait for walleyes and haven't for years. I fish jigs a lot. And I wanna talk about lead head jigs with some kind of dressing on them. I'm not referring to a jigging wrap. I'm gonna talk about a lead head jig like a moon eye jig as an example with either split tail or boot tail on the back of it, or more recently, uh, bucktail jigs, with, which have been incredibly productive, like the VMC Moontail jig. It's a killer. Now, the thing to remember when you're using artificials, you have to fish faster with the jig than you would if you were using a jig tip with live bait. Example, if you're throwing an eighth ounce jig with a minnow, if you're throwing an artificial, you would go to a quarter ounce jig with either the bucktail or the plastic. If you're throwing a quarter ounce jig with live bait, you'd go up to a three eighths ounce. You're triggering the fish. You have to fish faster, more aggressive. That's the key to using an artificial jig for walleyes with either plastic or hair on the back of it. And the retrieve speed, you dabble a little bit with it. Rule of thumb, the colder the water, you want the drop speed to be a little bit slower. The warmer it gets, you want that thing to really crash fast to trigger those bites. But uh, uh, it's my favorite way to catch walleyes day in and day out on any body of water. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, it puts fish in a boat. Now, if we shift to largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, we know that jigs, they're a really big thing in the bass fishing world. You have football head jigs, you have swim jigs, you have specific jigs for skipping docks, and you also have specific jigs for fishing in dense weeds. Hey, throughout the season, I fish them all. Now, more recently, in the last five, six years, swim jigging has become really, really popular for smallmouth bass and largemouth bass. You can cover a lot of water fast with a swim jig and uh, uh, it works in spring, summer, fall. I never go bass fishing for smallmouth or largemouth on any body of water without a swim jig rigged on one of my rods. It's that oh, productive. Man. A real, real beast. Football head style jigs work really great when you're fishing deeper water and you gotta cover some water pretty quick but uh, uh, they work great with scattered boulders or hard bottom areas. That's where they shine. And you don't jig this jig, you swim it almost like a crankbait. Cast it out, you leave it sink to the bottom and you slow roll it. You use a pretty heavy head. A lot of times a head as heavy as one ounce to get down and trigger and it just slides and bounces over the rocks and, and it, it's an amazing way to catch big smallmouth and big largemouth, especially in late summer going into the fall season. I love fishing this way. Yeah, and it's important to note that each jig has a specific function. When you're looking at the jig, you're looking at the shape of the head, you're looking at the eyelet or the line tie, you're looking at the hook, and each one of those pieces, when you put it together, that jig has a specific situation for a very specialized fishing technique. Now, what about panfish jigs? I, use a, I do a lot of jig fishing for crappies. And uh, my favorite weights are 1 16th up to 1 8th. Yeah, you know, very, very light. In a lot of lakes we fish, we're fishing weeds. We don't have a lot of wood in them. 
So, you know, I'll cast it out and you just control. You want that bait to move really slow. Remember, crappies aren't real aggressive. They won't chase a bait like a smallmouth bass does. You almost got to float that bait in front of them. But you can come over the top of weeds and the fish will come out of the, weed, the different weeds to hit them. Uh, uh, I use little boot tails, tube type baits, little, little tiny uh, different tail ac actions. Eye placement is important when you're fishing through the weeds. But I catch a ton of fish on artificials, a ton of crappies on art artificials. And uh, that's actually all season long if they're still up in shallow water. You go deep, it's a little, uh, a, a little bit different of a game. Spin jigs can be deadly too, uh, in and around weeds to put crappies in a boat. Well, that's some great insight into jig fishing. Thanks, Dad. Uh, when we come back after this short commercial break, we're going to have Joe Nelson sharing some insights on jig fishing for walleye. Tired of doing this? Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. Fuel treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Available now at Fleet Farm. You don't know their names yet, but you will. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with Smooth Moves. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our Timely Topics feature, where Joe Nelson is going to answer a few questions about jig fishing. I like to jig really most times of the year. I think spring starts out, you're fishing a lot of jig shallow fish, specifically walleyes, right? They're up in cabbage, they're up in some of the developing weeds. Even as they work out to the next break, you're just fishing a little bit heavier jigs quite often to keep up with them. And whether it's live bait and then eventually moving to plastics, jigs are a great way to just put baits in front of fish. And then again in the fall, pitching jigs in plastics, specifically great big ones, is, is a super way to get bit. It's, it's a tricky thing. For me, the simple rule of thumb is I fish the lightest jig that I can to mimic a really natural fall rate. However, I never let it get at the expense of being able to both feel the bait and then also being able to feel the bottom. If I can't feel the bottom or feel like I don't have control over the bait, there's very few situations in which I'll fish a jig head that light. So depending on your environment, it's heavy current areas, that could be a half ounce jig. In areas where it's dead calm and you're fishing shallow water, that could mean a 16th ounce jig. Every situation is different and never be afraid to try and retie, try and retie. It's really, it's gonna to lead to more fish getting that figured out. 
I'm pretty simple when it comes to color, um, yet my main rule is contrasting colors. I don't like fishing all the same color. Like for instance, if I'm fishing a black plastic, I don't like using a black or a dark jig head. I like mixing and matching colors because I feel that that contrast and seeing a darker bait up against a lighter jig head or a darker jig head up against a lighter bait, it's gonna provide that contrast. I think fish are gonna be able to see it more easily. I know I can certainly see it in the water next to the boat much more easily. But when it comes to just standard colors and how I go, um, you know, if I'm fishing clear water situations, uh, I tend to be more natural, more browns than blacks. Black is a great sleeper color for so many different things. But for the most part, when I'm not fishing clear water, I'm using the exact opposite. I'm using brighter colors. Again, this contrast idea. I'm fishing a lot of chartreuse. Um, those orange, blaze orange, hot orange, lighter red colors are a go-to in those environments where rusties uh, are in the water. So, you know, I'm kind of all over the board, but depending on the situation, in clear water specifically, I'll try to match the hatch be a little more natural, but in other conditions and situations, um, I'm going bright or I'm trying to match uh, rusty crayfish patterns. Man, there are so many jig styles out there. I can't say I religiously use every single one of them. I think there's a couple standouts that, that always, you know, year in, year out, find their way into my box. Your average standard jig is great, especially if you're talking live bait, like a fireball with no collar. Short shank works wonderful for just early season jig and minnow presentations. Also works in the summer if you're doing some vertical stuff right over the top of them. If you're fishing bigger minnows, the long shank varieties always have those for chubs, shiners. Stand-up jigs I tend not to use as much. Maybe rocky environments is when I use it the most. Um, it's nice to get that bait to stand up and out of the rocks a little bit. I feel like they're slightly more weedless too for whatever reason. Then one that I use just a little bit is one with the weed guard. It's not very common, but I have just a couple in my box in case I'm fishing really weeds with heavy stalks or wood environments. So those are the main ones that I like to fish and why, but I'll tell you what, every jig and jig design is meant to serve a purpose. And maybe the last one I'll say is, is anything with a good wire keeper. If you're fishing plastics, a wire keeper is just absolutely essential. So um, I make sure that I've got that big, strong, aggressive keeper to make sure that man, I don't pull the plastic down the bait a ways. Well, Joel definitely has a lot of great information, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to jig fishing. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. We have our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Northland tackles in the premium hardbait game with the Rumble Crankbait Series. Available in 15 custom artisan colors. All Northland Rumble Series baits are handmade with a unique heat compression molding process that ensures unmatched durability and baits that run true on the troll and cast farther than the competition. You'll discover that walleyes and other species find their unique role in actions simply irresistible. You're going to want to up your game with these new cranks. Fishing is definitely better with balsa. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose to dress for it. Introducing Blackfish Performance Rain Gear. 
Utilizing patented event technology, this advanced membrane allows body heat and vapors to escape while offering 100% waterproof protection. With an exceptional combination of waterproof and breathability ratings, Blackfish Rain Gear keeps you dry all day. Whether on the tournament trail or chasing weekend walleyes, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. Let's kick it off in Devil's Lake with Jason Mitchell. It's gotten hot, water temperatures are climbing. I mean, it, weeds are starting to grow up and so it definitely feels like summer, but you know, we're still catching a lot of fish shallow. And probably the biggest thing that we're noticing, there's places on Devil's Lake where you can see down six, seven, eight feet of water. And by Devil's Lake standards, that's pretty clear. And the biggest thing that we're seeing is that we're still catching fish shallow. A lot of these fish are still coming less than five feet of water. The big key is look for that stained water. Try to you know, spend a lot of time just looking for areas where you can only see down a foot, two feet of water. Just looking for that tea color. If you find that, typically you're going to find walleyes. And so we're using a lot of soft plastics, snapping them over the, over the weeds. That's a salmon walleye shad, but just a boot tail, paddle tail, either a quarter ounce to eighth ounce jig, depending on the depth of water. But uh, we're using a lot of plastics. We're catching some fish on cranks with some shad profile cranks at you know the number five size. We're also doing a lot of slip bobbering along the edges of the weed lines. And, but you gotta find that stain in the water. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head over to the Red River with Brad Derrick, who's been on some huge cats. Cat fishing up here on the Red in some sections is outstanding. Water temp just reached 70 degrees in the last couple of days and the fish are in the last push going up to the spawn. Now something to consider is the water is extremely, extremely low, so traveling around in boats can be very dangerous. Make sure you're very cautious so you're not hitting things and wrecking your equipment and being safe for yourself. But best baits have been fresh bait, gold eye, sucker, whatever you got. You don't have to cut huge pieces. Sit on a spot 15 to 20 minutes, get the active fish out. If you're not catching fish in five to 10 minutes after your 15 timer, move on to the next spot, just keep pulling the anchor, keep moving, and you're gonna have great success. <laughs> this is just one little taste of our morning today. Uh, the red is on fire, spawn is just around the corner. Thanks Brad. Now let's head east to Leech Lake with the Leisure Outdoor Boys. One of the things that we like to go to this time of year is our spinner rig. I focus with orange. I like to use these Max Smile Blades, trailed with a slow death hook. For a bottom bouncer, if I'm fishing 10 to 15 feet of water, I'm going just a simple ounce one. As those fish slide deeper, 15 to 25 feet, I'm gonna go with ounce and a half. Another thing that should never be too far uh, from your rod locker should be your standard Lindy Rig setup. I like green with leeches, orange with crawlers, number six hook for crawlers, number eight hook for leeches, just your traditional sliding snell. Areas of the lake to try, annex up on top of the rocks, nine to 10 feet of water if you got some wind. If they slide out deeper, 13 to 15 feet of water. Moki Reef, Otter Tail, Little Stony is another good one. In Walker Bay, target that 15 to 25 foot. Make sure you're fishing active fish. If they're not going, move on. Thanks, Jim. Now let's head north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. This warm June weather we've been having has made uh, fishing a little interesting. The walleye bite, for the most consistent bite, you need to get out early, like daybreak to 9 a.m. And then those last two hours in the evening, you know, from 7 o'clock till 9.30 at night is magic on Vermilion. Walleyes are biting a bunch of different ways. It's pretty much leeches and crawlers now for the live bait gig. Slip bobbers or your live bait rigs are putting a lot of fish in the boat. Jigging wraps, uh, hair jigs, that's all producing fish also. Start thinking transitions like off your rock to your sand, uh, weed lines, uh, sand to mud, that type of transition, and you should get into fish. So really pay attention to your electronics. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head over to Lake Superior in the Duluth area with Captain Jared Houston. Buzz, 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 buzz. We are just getting back from the super, arguably the most busy part of the year is happening right now. Lake Superior has got a bite going on with hot colored stick baits, salmon and lake trout. South Shore, you're looking for that key colored stained water. We have mud lines out there, so stay between the clear stuff and the mud line and you will find success. St. Louis River, it is happening. Still good, good bite going on. We're doing slow death trolling crawls to 
you get a bunch of walleyes right at the side of the boat in uh, you know anything from two to ten feet of water looking at the channel edges and onto the flats. Inland lakes, man that's happening too. Bluegills are doing their thing transitioning into the spawn at this point. You know we got a lot of big belly sunfish happening and they're, they're also attacking the you know the shallow waters right outside the weed edges. Uh, worm chunks under slip bobbers. It's getting hot, man. And so is the fishing. Rock and roll, tight lines. We'll talk to you later. In 2020, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 97% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Dondelinger difference today. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start out with the Blackfish Angler UPF shirt, a very comfortable, lightweight shirt in the summer heat to protect you from the sun, keep you cool, four-way stretch, great colors. Just the Blackfish whole apparel line is fantastic, and especially this one, the Angler UPF shirt. And next from Northland Tackle, the Deep V Jig. You can see the head design on this is, is narrow. And what that does is it allows it to drop down really fast when you're snap jigging for walleye. This is great for soft plastics and live bait to put on there. They have a little bait keeper on here. This is a great new jig from Northland Tackle. Also from Northland Tackle, the Limber Leech. And this is sort of a catch anything lure. Basically anything swimming in the upper Midwest in our lakes will probably bite this, cast it out, jig it, swim it. Um, it just works, great action. It's pre-rigged, you get a couple different baits in each package, just a fantastic little all-around fishing lure from Northland Tackle. And next from VMC, the Moontail Jig. This thing is awesome for walleye. You don't need any live bait, you don't need soft plastic trailer around here, you can fish it just out of the package. It has a tech set hook on here to keep fish pinned. A few different sizes available, some really bright colors. This works for bass. For wall, I've just I've been really, really impressed with this. I fish these a lot, the Moontail Jig from VMC. Okay, for fluorocarbon, Suffix Advanced, this is a really great fluorocarbon line. I use this as well. This uh, particular 17 pound works great for spinner bait fishing, heavy jigs when you're bass fishing, heavy crank baiting. Uh, I use the 17 and 20 pound a lot, and, and fluorocarbon is virtually Invisible, as they say, <laughs> underwater. Light passes through it very easily. This is a very sensitive, supple line. The G2 winding reduces the line memory, so you don't get those line twists with this. And, and it's great, 17 pound. I fish a lot of this in six pound for finesse fishing and eight pound for walleye and bass as well. Well, bugs can be a pain this time of year, and Seafoam has you covered for cleaning your vehicles and boats with Bugs Be Gone. This removes basically any organic crud from just about any surface. Just spray it on, wash it, wipe it off, uh, both in the house, in the garage. This will work in the kitchen, in the bathroom. It works on, on chrome, metals, plastics, windshields, mirrors, just about everything. A great all-around product and definitely in the upper Midwest this time of year can get a lot of use to clean just about everything. 
And next from Wavy Label to Spons Tiri Sunglass, you have a couple different lens options on here. You have a polycarbonate lens and you have a glass lens. They offer a lifetime warranty with these. This is great for sight fishing and obviously eye protection. It's great to have a really good, comfortable sunglass and Wavy Label has you covered with this. And next from Blackfish Gear, the Women's Surge Top and Bibs, very comfortable, lightweight rain jacket that's great uh, during the summertime. Non-slip shoulder straps here, a really great series from Blackfish, the Surge Top and Bibs. And to my left here, the Shield Series Angling Edge Waterproof Backpack from Heavy Hauler. A nice, let me turn this over here, you can see it has a nice padded backing on this. You have a handle on the top. You actually have a, a laptop pocket on the inside, but you can fill this up uh, for fishing gear in the boat or your shore fishing. Just a really great waterproof backpack. The Angling Edge Shield Series from Heavy Hauler. And finally from St. Croix, a Bassex spinning rod. This is a great value rod from St. Croix. This whole Bassex series is awesome. This particular one is a seven foot, one inch, medium heavy power, fast action. And you can throw baits on here like three eighths ounce all the way up to three quarter ounce baits on here. Just a really great series from St. Croix. Well, be sure to stop by your local Fleet Farm store. You can always shop online anytime at fleetfarm.com. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. I get asked this question a lot, what is your off day smallmouth baits? What are you using when the conditions get tough, when the smallmouth get quote smallmouthy, you know, and they're acting like smallmouth? Uh, number one go-to is hair jig. And 16th to eighth ounce, I very rarely go any heavier than that. And my favorite colors in a hair jig, number one black, black VMC hair jig, best hair jig there in my opinion, then brown, then green. Then I go to Northland Limber Leech right there. This guy here, there's you, you just fool them. It looks like a leech. It's got a ton of action to it. You can swim it through rocks. It's really it's snag free. You know you work it a little bit faster than a hair jig, but not much. And my third, my third, is the Limber Leech head on the Impulse, the Northland Impulse Rigging Leech right there. That gives it basically a longer profile, a little bit more action in the water, and a little bit slower fall. So the one thing you'll notice with all three of these baits, people may think, well, the hair jig might look like a minnow. I truly don't think that. I think the hair jigs look like a leech or a bug. Same thing with both of these. I don't know any smallmouth worth its weight in sand that can pass up a swimming leech. If a smallmouth swims by the boat, a bright green, bright yellow boat, doesn't matter, with the radio blaring, and you throw a leech in the water, I guarantee you that smallmouth is gonna come up and eat it. And that's why on tough condition days, hair jigs and leech imitations are gonna be my go-to bait. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show and be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. We got a ton of content on there, articles, videos, buzz bite reports from around the angling buzz region. On next week's show, we're gonna be talking about musky logic. And we also wanna remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, dry. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder and we'll see you next time.